medieval village, a place where merchants sell their wares, horses, farmers, and all manner of livestock crowd the narrow streets. A place for travelers to take a moment out of their busy lives of adventure to get some sleep at the local inn. This idyllic setting makes for the perfect battle mat, which can be great for games like War Master, Flames of War, or even 28mm or heroic scale games such as Age of Sigmar, Frostgrave, Relic Blade, and so on. Join me as I make a full 4x6 battle map and some thematic buildings to go on top. We're going to do some engraving, attempt to simulate a river, and use a metric ton of grass flocking and foliage. The goal of making the map flexible imposes challenges that we wouldn't have if we made a rigid board. We sacrifice being able to make interesting slopes for portability, but we don't have to sacrifice any detail. My approach is similar to my sci-fi battle map. The basis of the texture will be added with EVA foam and acrylic caulk. It's the kind you use to seal gaps in your baseboard trim. The glue choices are also important as we can't use any glues that turn brittle and hard. For the EVA, high temperature hot glue works well for applications like this, but contact cement can also be really good and give a strong bond at the cost of some noxious compounds. To get the layout, I initially just scribbled some lines on the mat itself with no planning, but this ended up looking wrong to me. It was hard to picture the end result and it didn't look great. I spent some time with some reference images and maps and layouts. I was inspired by the iconic village of Hamlet from the first edition of D&D. If scaled correctly, this village had the perfect layout, a river running through it and a small set of roads and a lot of tiny buildings. Armed with this plan, I cut out EVA squares and other shapes to lay out as my building foundations. I glued these down and then I set to work on heat gun inscribing them to various patterns of stone and wood planks. I also placed the riverbed as sections of EVA to let me visualize it better. To serve as my roads, I'm using acrylic caulking. You don't need to mix any paint into this as we're gonna be painting over it anyway and sealing it well but adding a bit of paint did help differentiate it between various parts. To either add some or remove texture from the brush strokes, apply some water to the caulking and then stipple on the texture with a brush or other tools. The acrylic is quite malleable and it would be hard to get non-organic shapes with it, but for roads, rivers, and piles of dirt, it's easy enough to do. For the roads, I also added a bit of fine sand and scraped it back and forth. This creates a sort of dirt road-like pattern. I wanted the building foundations to be quite faded and not stick out prominently. So in various parts, I actually overlapped the paste onto the EVA foam to blend the textures together more. This will help with any building placement and makes the whole board a lot more modular in my eye. As there's no specific dimensions that need to be met when placing structures, and you can even overlap a structure over multiple parts. For the river, I also raised up the adjacent areas with more acrylic so that there wouldn't be the appearance of a river rising up from the ground. That's just not natural. You would expect it to be sunken in as the lowest point on the board. That would increase the thickness quite a bit of the whole piece to get realistic, but we can mimic it in this section and fool the eye. You can also add cardboard underneath the mat in places you want raised up and get a similar effect for some gradual elevation. To add some additional blending and texture, I also used crackle paint. When applied in globs, it dries and cracks to form some interesting designs. For the river, I wanted a different texture than the road. I epoxied some larger stones to sit at the bottom or in the middle of my river, and I then came in with much coarser pebbles that I used on the roads and made embankments on each side. Using some Mod Podge in a syringe, I'm able to dispense just the right amount of glue to the areas I want and then water it down to help it spread. The Mod Podge is slightly flexible, and even when dry it'll have a bit of bend to let me roll up the mat. Alright, to unify all that texture, I'm coming in with some grey latex house paint. This is cheap in large quantities and free in my case since I always have a few cans lying around from old paint jobs around the house. Hit that like button if you have any half started cans of house paint. I use a roller to get most of the flat areas and then come in with a brush for the river. I don't want this to go on too thick but I want to get pretty good coverage. To paint the roads I watered down some tan craft paint and blocked them in. The advantage of using a light base coat here is that we don't need to work as hard to brighten it back up. This is a lesson I learned from Steve Famine recently. 
His advice was that if you're going to be adding lots of darker tones in the form of washes and pigments anyway, then you shouldn't have to work harder to get the lightness back into the board. Just start light and darken as needed. To mark areas where grass might be touching the buildings or hint at some moss growing, I added some dark green and slightly turquoise washes. Most of the paints I use here are heavily watered down to a glaze consistency. I want them all blending in and out of each other, and I use a paper towel to make sure I don't get any excessive pooling or hard lines. Some dark brown comes in now, no real plan or formula of where to apply this. Just where it looks right or to give some variation. Most of the river gets a brown coat this way. I then took some muted blue ink and dropped it all over the riverbed while the brown paint was still wet. And then I came in with a brush and blended in to give it a smooth transition. All that texture we added previously works for us now, since we're not using opaque paints. This is the same concept as using contrast paints on miniatures to show all those details in the sculpt itself without a lot of difficulty. All right, let's add more magic, adding in a dark wash all over the roads, brickwork, or other textured areas of the map. Again, don't let this pool up. Use a paper towel to scoop up any areas you feel are too wet, or add more paint to get areas to a deeper contrast. I came in and differentiated some of those round river stones with some light gray and brown to set them apart from the riverbed here. And I do something similar for the wood floorboards of some of the buildings. With some pastels, I scrape off dust with a knife to make some weathering powders. I use a lot of the darker hues and a makeup brush to blend them into the board. This dust is very easy to brush off at this stage until sealing it, so be careful as you manipulate it. For the river, a bright teal pigment worked well in some spots, and some light green for the edges. Now to save all that hard work and preserve the paint job, I'm hitting everything with a matte water-based sealer. This is going to keep all the colors from running as we hit the map with a lot of water in the next step. Flocking. I had a chat with Luke from Geek Gaming Scenics, and he gave me some advice on how to seal in all the flocking on this map. I'm going to be using mostly watered down Mod Podge and working in many layers, sealing and resealing as I go. He's got a lot of tutorials on his channel. With a thick layer of Mod Podge first, then a base layer of coconut fibers from the pet shop. I sprayed down with more watered down Mod Podge to layer on other color flocks. I actually used several different types of flocks, including some Woodland Scenics. Geek Gaming Scenic Foam Flock, and some homemade sawdust flock made from Ryan, one of my awesome patrons. I gotta say, the quality of the Geek Gaming Flock is very good, very fine grained. Well done, Luke. This was my first time using it, and it's awesome. It helps to think of how grass and foliage would develop naturally, with darker, more lush bunches near buildings or bodies of water, and then lighter grass or dead grass out in the open places where it's stepped on a lot or it gets a lot of sunlight. I mix and match until I got a lot of variation. On some passes, I did get some cracking as it dried, but that's nothing a couple more layers of flock and static grass can't fix. Oh, speaking of static grass, if you don't own a static grass applicator, well, you can always use a balloon and a sweater. It's a bit more tedious, but it works. From here, I did several rounds of sealing with more Mod Podge sprayed over all the foliage waiting a day or two and doing it all over again. I did some periodic vacuuming as well to get any loose flock off. While that dried, I thought I would have a crack at making some medieval houses to go on the board, since I don't really have any buildings that fit the setting. To make my life easier, I designed some corner connectors, doors, windows, and other add-on features for the buildings. If you want to grab the files, I'll link them in the description. These corners take foam core or double corrugated cardboard piece glued in and form a strong connection that's easy to put together with just PVA glue. You can also do the corners from foam bricks as well, it just takes a bit longer. Alright, I'm not going to bore you with the details, you came here for the battle mat, so let's speed montage this build up.
This has been sitting and drying for several days. I think it's about time we poured this river. To get a flexible yet clear surface, I turned to clear silicone. I thinned it down with some mineral spirits to get it to run easier and carefully spread and poured it into the river. As it dried, I massaged it with a stick to get some waves and ripples. And after about a day, it cured. This stuff tends to cloud over if you apply it too thick, but we're only dealing with a very thin pour here, so it seemed pretty safe. One thing I wanted was the buildings to fit in a variety of places. If you think of all the cobblestone and stone texture as patios or foundations between buildings, you can get creative with building placement as you're not locked into the outlines that were drawn in. This is also helped by the smooth blends that we added between flock and dirt and rocky texture. It blends them all in and out of each other. I also came in with some more paints and airbrushing to blend together the patterns more. I started cutting the mat down to size once it was all dry. Seems to roll up well. I'll be storing mine flat for the most part, because I think the flocking will have a rough time if it stays rolled up for long periods of time. But it is nice to be able to roll up and move it as needed, and it only takes up a thin profile compared to bigger, more rigid battlefields. I played around with some layouts for the village. Some of the trees I made in a previous video came in handy here, and I even tried out a part of the giant cathedral to see how it would look. I think I'm going to have fun coming up with various different layouts for this map. I'll need to make some more houses, I think, for sure. Glad I printed off more of those connectors and decorations. If you like this video, check out some of my other sci-fi battle maths or some other videos on the channel. Cheers!